Well, now let's get you up to date on the investigation of some suspicious packages on three P UPS planes and a truck. Julie Hyman has been following the story for us. She's out in the newsroom with more. And Julie, this also involves FedEx planes. It does. It seems like there are a lot of questions still surrounding uh, what exactly is going on. But essentially, there were toner cartridges found on some of these planes that had wires coming from them, particularly a toner cartridge that was found at a, uh, an airport in East Midlands in the UK. Uh, for the most part, these packages have now been found that they were not actually bombs. It looks like they were mocked up to perhaps look that way. And in fact, a US, an official said the U.S. is investigating whether this was some sort of a dry run for a mail bomb plot. Now, that's according to an official who spoke with the Associated Press. So that's why we're seeing perhaps uh, these various uh, toner cartridges that are, are being tested as suspicious packages around the country and again in the U.K. as well. Now, a lot of these these uh, planes that we've been talking about have been cleared for takeoff. They certainly landed safely in the U.S. from their U.K. destination. Some of them did originate in the country of Yemen, so that's something officials are investigating as well. When we're talking about the locations here, there were at least two planes in Philadelphia, one in New York. At least uh, one of these planes, the one coming from Newark, New Jersey, uh, did take off for another destination. So it looks like some of these are now running once again after uh, these various investigations. But again, Lisa, it looks like uh, there's investigation as to whether this was some sort of dry run. We'll be monitoring all of these uh, headlines as they continue to come out. What's interesting, we should also note, is that if you look at the market reaction, we haven't really seen any. And I've been talking to a couple of traders who have been saying they haven't been alarmed by this because a lot of these packages have been cleared. So that's just something to consider as well. You tend to see an outsized market reaction in some cases like this on concerns, but that doesn't seem to be happening today. Julia, it seems like there was a huge volume of information that came out all at once in a very short span of time. Hard to actually keep track of exactly where these planes were landing, where they were coming from, who was doing the investigation. But I know that in one of the headlines I had seen something about a UPS van in Brooklyn. That's right. Okay, so uh, give me a little bit more insight on that. Yes, well, as those of us who live in the New York area know, all the time you tend to have a vehicle stopped for suspicious reasons, whether it's a package or something else. There was one that was stopped in Brooklyn. Unclear if it's a link to the rest of what we're talking about, but it was indeed a delivery truck. It looks like that also has been cleared. So it looks like now that a lot of these, as I said, have been cleared, even though they were stopped and they were uh, being investigated, and that truck is among them, Lisa as far as we can tell. Julie, did all of these planes originate in one particular area? I know there was a lot of um, information coming out about these Yemen being there uh, in Dubai. I think there was an embargo on planes from Yemen. Is there any connection with Yemen in all of these situations? Uh, again, it's not clear because, as you say, the volume of information coming out is as it is. Uh, three of these planes, it sounds like, did originate in East Midlands. Again, that's an airport in the United Kingdom. It's not clear if all of those came from Yemen, but certainly some of them, uh, one or more of them, did come from Yemen. So it looks like uh, investigators are sort of focusing on that country as uh, the origination of some of this and, and a focus of their investigations. Um, but again, a lot of uh, information coming out. Out, as you said, trying to figure out exactly what is going on and whether these planes are now going to be continuing to their eventual destinations. All right, Julie Hyman in our newsroom. Thanks for staying on top of it for us. We'll be checking in if there are more headlines. But for now, I think one of the questions everyone asks in a situation like this is how is the information coming out? Why is it being released? And who is doing the investigations? To answer those, we are now joined by Richard Falconrath. He's a former deputy commissioner of counterterrorism for the New York Police Department and former deputy assistant to President George W. Bush on security measures. He is currently a Bloomberg contributing editor and he joins us now live from D.C. Thank you so much, Richard, for joining us. And I think, you know, as we try to sort through the headlines, I mentioned this a moment ago with Julie, is that we seem to get a number of headlines in a very short period of time. And it seems as if most of the issue is resolved. But what's your read? Well, that's how these situations unfold. They move very fast. All sorts of uh, actors start doing things that are suddenly in the media, and it looks like the story explodes when, in fact, it's been in development for a while. And that's my hunch here, as I don't have any specific information about how this developed. That will come out shortly, I, I imagine. But it looks to me like there was some sort of lead that originated, some piece of intelligence that's not yet in the public domain, that's in addition to the discovery of the toner cartridge in London that led to the advisory to the cargo carriers, and they began 
began searching their aircraft for possible devices. Who does the investigations? I think we were hearing the most in terms of comments coming from the FBI. I mean, that's what I saw in most of the headlines that I was reading. But clearly, the Homeland, the Department of Homeland Security is involved. You also have the TSA involved. You also have the New York Police Department involved. Who's typically responsible for the for the primary investigation? The primary investigative agency is the FBI. They are going to lead this investigation to see what was going on. They are in charge of these things when they are inside the United States. The screening of aircraft is the responsibility of TSA, which is a part of the Department of Homeland Security. In the case of a, a car bomb or a, a suspicious device in a truck, the local authorities will respond to that and deal with it. And that's what you saw in Brooklyn with the NYPD bomb squad responding. Abroad, however, it's different agencies. It's mainly our intelligence community, the CIA, who will try to unravel what happened in Yemen and Dubai that contributed to this unfolding plot. Let me ask you a question. Obviously, since 9-11, our organizations, all of which you just mentioned there, have gotten very good at coordinating their efforts and coordinating communication. Is that what you're seeing when you look at the, the number of news reports that we've gotten in a very short period of time? Is that what you're seeing? Well, my, here's my hunch. Uh, an advisory went out to the carriers, to FedEx and UPS, telling them that something had happened in the United Kingdom, a suspicious device had been found, and to be extra vigilant and possibly to search their aircraft for packages that originated in the Middle East. And they began those searches, and that led to the events that were reported here in the last hour. And so that's my guess on how this went. The triggering event in terms of the news coverage was an advisory to the carriers. Uh, at least I've seen that happened in other instances that I've personally been involved with, and I think this seems to fit that pattern. Richard, this device that they found, I think Julie mentioned it earlier that there might be, it could have been a dry run. It was a toner that had some loose wires connected to it. Sounds relatively harmless. Apparently it was tested, at least one of the devices was tested for explosives and it tested negative. What is your take on this? Was this a dry run? Well, we don't know, and that's why it needs to be investigated. It looks either like a dry run or an act of mischief, and we've seen plenty of acts of mischief, so that we can't rule that out. But there is a significant vulnerability here that someone may be probing, and that is cargo aircraft entering U.S. airspace. There currently is no federal regime for screening parcels coming into the United States on Air, on cargo carrying aircraft. If they are on passenger aircraft, then yes, they are screened. But if they are on a cargo carrying aircraft, then they are not. And so it's possible that someone is probing that particular vulnerability. And if they are probing that, does it worry you at all? This is the first time I've heard of an event that looks as if it's happened simultaneously on different continents. Well, that's not, there have been other events like that uh, where you've seen plots that have a part in Europe, a part in the Middle East, possibly in South Asia and Pakistan. And uh, the U.S. government is able to coordinate these sorts of operations globally fairly well. Um, when it suddenly bursts into the media, uh, it can be very alarming. But it's frequently the case that something that's happening inside the United States has international connectivity that gets investigated at the same time. All right. Thank you very much, Richard, for joining us on this Friday. This is Bloomberg's contributing editor, Richard Falcon, at the Chertoff Group.